video, we're going to build on our knowledge and learn how to calculate stock returns using some real world data. Just a quick recap though, recall that we said that the general equation to calculate the return on a stock is this beauty right here, or alternatively you can work with this equation. And of course this is the equation for a return on a stock that pays dividends, so for a dividend paying stock. If you want to calculate the return on a non-dividend paying stock, you can still use this formula because the div t plus one would just be equal to zero. So this would simplify to pt plus one over pt minus one. Going forward, I'm gonna assume that you're quite comfortable and quite happy with this equation and that you understand how it works and why it works the way it does. Just one last thing before we use this with real world data, remember that you can always use alternative notations as long as you're consistent with what you're doing. Right, so to start with, we said that the return on a stock J is equal to PT plus one plus div T plus one over PT minus one. Um, but equally, you can define it as PT plus div T over PT minus one minus one, right? So either of these two are fine, as long as you're consistent with the one you're going with. Because if you notice here, PT plus one is one day forward and PT would be one day or one time period before, and similarly here, PT is, you know, one time period ahead of PT minus one. So either notation works as long as you're consistent with it. All right, let's go ahead now and apply this formula with some real world data. Getting access to uh, financial data can be uh, an expensive affair, but thankfully we have uh, free alternatives as well. So Yahoo Finance is just one of them. So if you pop into Yahoo Finance, let's say we're looking at uh, Facebook, you just put in the ticker over here and then you've got Facebook and we wanna get some data, right? So you can go into um, historical data right here and then set the time period. I'm just gonna go with 1st of Jan, 2012. Importantly, Facebook was not listed as a uh, public company on the 1st of Jan, 2012. Um, they were listed later on in 2012, but it doesn't matter because uh, Yahoo Finance will pull the data from the first day of trading. So we don't need to know the exact date and when they started trading. Um, so I'm just gonna arbitrarily set the uh, last date of data as the 31st of December, um, 2017. Uh, you can choose any other time frame that you like, but if you wanna work with me in this, uh, then maybe uh, work with the same date just to make life easier. Um, go ahead and click done then, and then make sure to hit apply. Um, and then you wanna download your data, which will come out as a CSV file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open that now and then we're good to go. So here's the data that we're looking at then. Uh, this is the, uh, there's quite a lot of things going on here, but uh, let's just see what the information is. So we've got the date, which is, uh, you know, the date of uh, trading. Then we've got the open, which is the price at which the stock opened at. The high, which is the high point of the day. So that's the highest price at which the stock traded at on the day. Uh, low is the lowest point of the stock, so it's the lowest price that the stock traded at on the day. Close is what the stock closed at, and adjusted close is pretty much the same thing, except that it will also adjust for dividends. When companies pay out dividends, the stock price actually decreases, and so the adjusted closing price will factor in uh, that uh, change in price as a result of the dividends. And it'll also do it for things like stock splits and uh, you know stock bonuses and things like that. Volume is just uh, the number of uh, trades that took place. So for the purpose of what we're trying to do here, uh, i.e. to calculate returns, we don't actually need uh, any of this information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of that. And we don't need the volume information either. All we need are the dates and the adjusted close. And then what we can do is calculate the returns so remember return is P at time T plus one. So T plus one here will be the 21st of May, 2012, divided by P at time T, which in this case is the 18th of May, 2012, minus one, right? So PT plus one divided by PT minus one. So we can see that the return there is negative 10.99%, call it negative uh, 11%. And then you wanna do exactly the same thing for all of these uh, prices. So all you need to do is double click uh, the corner of the cell and Excel has magically calculated all of our daily returns. So now what we can do is actually look at something quite interesting. I'm just gonna rename this the price. And then if I plot this out in a chart, you'll see something quite interesting. 
So this right here is the price of uh, Facebook. You can see that it's sort of a nice trending line. And you know, it looks almost predictable, right? But it's, it's not necessarily predictable. Uh, well, it isn't predictable. Um, but what I want to show you actually is uh, why it's not really predictable. And that's because the returns follow what we call a random walk. So the returns on stocks, uh, contrary to what anyone might tell you, uh, are simply not predictable. Right? And we can literally see this uh, if we were to plot out the returns. And you can do this for any stock. Uh, I've just done it for Facebook. But you can do it for literally any stock. And you'll see something quite similar. So this right here is showing you the daily returns of uh, Facebook from 2012 through to end of 2017. And you can hopefully literally see um, that this is completely random. Right, It's up on one day. It's down on another day and so on and so forth. There's this massive spike that you've got, but we can't predict it in any way whatsoever. It's just um, completely random. That's just something I thought I'd share with you. So you've got the price of uh, a stock, which is a quite, quite a nice sort of chart. It almost looks predictable. But then when you look at the returns, which is kind of what is going to make you uh, the money, right? So the returns is how much money you're making. Remember, just expressed in percentage terms. Um, but that's completely uh, random. Now, I just want to share with you uh, something else. So we've seen how to collect the data from uh, Yahoo Finance, and um, you know we download it to a CSV, um, and then we sort of delete other data. So th this can be a, a tad bit tedious. Fortunately, we don't have to rely only on uh, Yahoo Finance. We can also use Google Sheets and Google Finance uh, together, which really does make life uh, a lot easier. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open um, Google Sheets. I've got a Google uh, Sheet open here. All you need to do is call the Google Finance function, put in the ticker, which in our case is Facebook or FB. The attribute uh, is uh, what you want uh, for the stock. So we want just the close, which is likely the uh, adjusted close. And then we want to put the start date. So the start date, uh, we went with the 1st of Jan uh, 2012. And then you want the end date, uh, which in our case was the 31st of December 2017. And then you specify the uh, interval or the frequency. So I'm just going to go with daily. And that's it. So hit enter and you've got Google Sheets uh, pulling all of the data. Nice and simple, really straightforward. Um, so we don't need to you know, go into some place and then download the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and then delete data that we're not going to be working with, right? So this is relatively easier. And as before, you would simply calculate the returns as uh, PT over PT minus one minus one, and then just double click the corner uh, of this cell, and it does it for every single one thereafter. Um, and if you like, you can plot uh, a graph uh, over here as well. So just go with chart and uh, Google will actually predict the appropriate chart that you want. And then as, as before, remember that when you look at returns, it of course is completely random. Um, so you end up with something that is not predictable whatsoever. Okay, so we've seen how to work with this on Google Finance as well. Importantly, uh, whenever we're investing in stocks, we base our decision on the expected return uh, rather than the realized return because the historic performance of a stock doesn't necessarily predict uh, where it's going to go in future, uh, right? So given that we're investing for the future, uh, we want to base this uh, decision on something to do with the future. And that, in fact, is the expected return. So we base our investment decision on what we expect the stock to earn us uh, in future, uh, rather than relying exclusively on historic returns. Now, there's three main ways in which we can do this. So you can calculate the expected return using the stock's historical average return. This is probably the easiest way to do it. But you can also go a little more sophisticated and look at uh, state contingent uh, weighted probabilities, which sounds a lot more fancy than uh, it really is. Lastly, you can also use uh, asset pricing models, for instance, the CAPM or the Capital Asset Pricing Model. We're going to go over each and every one of these. So over the next few videos, we'll learn how to estimate the expected returns uh, using all three approaches. For now, it's just important that you know and fully understand how to calculate returns. In summary then, 
we learned that we can obtain real world data from Yahoo Finance or finance.yahoo.com. Uh, we can download the data as a CSV and then conduct our investment analysis. Importantly, we generally don't need a lot of the data that we get, so we typically just work with the adjusted close um, and the dates. And so given that this can be a little bit of a tedious exercise, we do have an alternative solution in that we can work directly uh, with data on Google Sheets by pulling the data uh, with the Google Finance function. Furthermore, we learned that uh, prices may appear to be deceptively predictable, uh, but always remember that they're simply not predictable, and that's because returns follow what we call a random walk. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we said that we base our investment decisions on expected returns, not returns. All right, that's enough from me for now. Have a go at the quiz, and I'll see you in the next video.